we just grab this. Eh, Van Dyke Brown. You know what? Yeah, no, I'm going to actually throw... Let's make this interesting here. Let's throw a little bit of indigo or Prussian blue on this. More Prussian blue. And then we'll just let that set there. We'll go back to our little hobbitses. Then we'll wipe some of this away. And then we'll uh, paint a little bit more on our golem right there. Because whatever. A little bit of brown matter there. And then we'll just uh, yeah, let this set. And then we'll uh, wipe some of that away. Wipe some of this away on our golem here. Ah, well, you can see some of the, the some of the blue in there. A little bit of the indigo went into that. And then what we're gonna do is we'll take this off. We'll go back to our little hobbitses, and then we'll come back to our golem here. See what kind of fun stuff we can do with that oil painting wise. Let's grab something here. Just throw some of this onto the under the rock there. Look and see how the the dark just got into that brush. Very quickly here. We're also gonna let that hit the skin tone. And then we're gonna take some of our warmer colors and gradually work those in as well. This is mostly the radiant blue here. It's almost a kind of a moonlight sort of a thing. Yeah, Doji, uh, I mean, well, you, the one nice thing is that, you know, if it keeps happening, eventually you're going to solve the mystery of who that is. You know, if they never got your paints, then you'd never know who it was was getting the mystery person was. If that keeps happening, eventually you'll figure it out. But uh, you know, uh, definitely be open to all candidates. You know, who knows where they might be from? Certainly not your hometown. Definitely, definitely look at all the out of town suspects for sure. Yeah, don't don't bother wasting your time on any homegrown suspects or anything like that. That would be that would be a waste of time. Uh, let's see. Actually, oh no, that's not one of the. No, that's the Miami. I think they did a sale on those. I just got this one here, just to see if it was any good. But I haven't gotten any of the Schminkies yet. Um, Eventually, we'll try one or two of them here. And thank you so much for that follow. We appreciate that. Is it okay? He's like, dude, man, I uh, appreciate the save there. He's like, oh, yeah, saying that you had some part to play. He's like, I appreciate that, but you could have told me that I'm just going to like be dancing around and then fall into a giant pit of lava. You're like, you kind of left that out, dude. He's like, well, you know, I'm an old dude. I forgot. Uh, Doji, uh, let's see, has uh, has Bina tried any of those? I don't know if, uh, hey, Green Fairy, you haven't tried any of those, have you? I think maybe, maybe Pawn Expected tried some. I think maybe, maybe Grim was trying some of those. Now, this should be interesting here. Well, <laughs> all right, there you go. Look at this. <laughs> That's some of the Radiant Blue. And then uh, some of our radiant magenta. Uh, so D Marino, uh, it's interesting. It, it's interesting what paints are good for miniatures, and which ones just really are better for well, say two D art. And there are definitely some that just are not well suited to miniatures. I have to say there's even some Williamsburgs, as much as I love the Williamsburg stuff. There's some colors that would not be my first choice to use on a miniature. Or even my second. But eventually I'll try and get some of the Schmincke. Uh, I've been trying to find some things that maybe aren't on the expensive side. 
because we already have the Williamsburg stuff. It would essentially be like, uh, okay, here's, we'll substitute this expensive one for, well, another one that's basically the same price. So I'm trying to find things that are close to the Williamsburg, but at not Williamsburg prices, I guess. So again, just throwing some quick, quick, quick lights here on our golem. And then we're going to have to try and throw a little bit of warmer colors in this too. We don't want it to all just be the cooler colors here. But it uh, it happens quick. Don't blink. Don't blink. Hey, Arctic Turtle, how you doing? Look, we have a couple of Gothmogs here. There's two Gothmogs, and now we just uh, we just started a third Gothmog right here. He said we are clearly not doing enough Gothmogs on this stream, so we grabbed another one. So it wasn't enough that there was the uh, the Balrog named Gothmog. Then there was the Orc named Gothmog, which should be coming here relatively soon. Uh, the, the mounted version and the unmounted version. I have the printing goes ever on version of Gothmog. The mounted version is a little bit unusual. The mount is very small. Yeah, D. Marino. That's how I started out with the uh, the oh the modern color set. That's the one modern color set. Then we started picking up the individual tubes, and then we started to realize things like well, their Van Dyke brown is well definitely superior to the I was at the Windsor Newton Van Dyke brown hands down. Even I think a little bit better than the. Uh, a bit better than the Gamlin. The surprising thing is that Mars Black from Williamsburg is actually less expensive than Black Spinel from uh, from Gamlin. Uh, let's see. Well, Di Marino. Uh, fortunately, there's not that many. Right, you've got indigo, you've got Prussian blue, you've got phthalo green, phthalo blue. You've got, well, Egyptian violet slash uh, diazonine violet, Indian yellow. Uh, then you have things like pearline black, Mars black. Even terra rosa can be a staining color if you... Uh, allow it to just kind of sit there but there's really not all that many staining colors uh, doji the black spinel was nice you know I haven't used that in a while it's been been a while since I used that I have to throw that back out on the palette too now here we're going to try and uh, really get some some lighter stuff going here on the top of his head Probably going to be doing some some pin line stuff here. Possibly to get a little bit of warmth into the uh, shadow areas. So Arta Michael, uh, so let's see, are you printing out? Well, let's see. Arch Villain had a whole line of goth mugs. Lost Kingdoms has like 10 months worth of goth mug sculpts. I think even Hylid Miniatures, they said, you know what? We'll just have a whole line of dwarf Gothmogs. I know Landress is, he's just eager to print out all of those dwarf Gothmogs. Alrighty. Is this hair? It is, but boy, there's just these little tiny strands. Some of his head shows through those. And yes, we can still go still go lighter than this. I'm just sort of uh, moving my brush around here and letting that do a little bit of its own 
minor blending there. You know what? Here, let's let's separate this a bit. All right. The radiant turquoise and the fast matte. We'll use this to get just a, so, a little bit of separation here from our gallop, and then we're going to do some indigo. Uh, yeah, we'll do some indigo pin line washes down into the uh, rocks as well. Oh boy, that's too much thinner. Ah, so look at that, a whole tyrannid army of all goth mogs right there. One can never have too many goth mogs. And of course, this is just a solid metal figure here just stuck on the base. This, uh, I didn't actually make this base here. I'm hoping to get uh, one of the one of the 3D printable ones so that I can make us well you know the was it the secret cave there in Athelion for the Athelion Rangers All right, again just looking to catch a couple little lights here right there on our base but that's got even more blue to it here. I want to start bringing in oh, maybe even some violets or dirty little magenta because, you know, why not? I did throw a little bit of my texture paste around the edges of that to mesh that with the rest of the base here. Now we'll take this. And then, well, here we go. Dirty little magenta. Some of that red. Oh, a naphthol red. That's another possible staining color. It's, it's not, it, again, it's a, you have to, one of those you have to kind of leave on there for a while. But it can do some staining work for you. That was a big shock. I'll tell you that. All right, where's my blending? But there it is. So we're going to take this. There we go. Now, actually, a De Marino, is there any other project that uh, you've kind of been contemplating? You say, okay, when, when we're either through with this one or if I need a break from this, I will try this. Now here, I'm going to go instead with that. Well, that's got a lot of yellow on it. But that could actually be okay. I don't know, just a little something different here. Uh, I will, I think, use the little bit of the radiant violet with that. Don't want that to get too light too quickly here. Ah, that's better. So, yeah, Bill, then thanks again for the heads up on the on the resins there like we said last night affordable affordable printing resin that uh, that certainly resonates with me now does this uh, I'm gonna say that's just hair that goes right past his ear she uh, putting a little bit of the indigo into there I know we just did some of the Van Dyke brown there Uh, so Fallen Freely, uh, Soraya has some sales going on. Uh, now, for me, it was the all-important smoky black simple along with... An, uh, I, there's a new one. It's uh, the gray. It's all in that simple line. Now, let me see if I can... Well, first get back to my reference here. Ah, uh, you know what? Boy, his eyes are not quite... Uh, as dark as I thought. Here, let's go with this. That's the, well, kind of a weird, dirty indigo color. Which way do we want to look? I think if we have them look at this way, we get that much more. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, let me see if I can lighten this up, and then we do some, some dark 
here. So we'll do this. And of course the the Soraya is uh, is important because they're the ones that make the smoky black. Uh, the simple clear for whatever reason it seems to be a little bit funky but the smoky black is always fine. Now I'm going to try this again here. We're going to take the Egyptian violet, some of our fan, not fanchion red, and let me see if I can't do a little bit of a pin line here. Okay, then we'll come back with some some yellows, whatever, for his skin there, or his teeth. Now that went a little bit out of wax, so we're going to have to just darken this up a bit. Also, maybe see if we can get the pupil in there. Uh, just too much thinner on that. It happens. Now well, we've got a pupil for him now. And then, now that we've done that, we have to Kind of cut this off here with some of our light. All right, Doji. Oh, that's right. Uh, well, it's Saturday, so it's time for some breakfast. Hopefully that uh, you get something really tasty there, Doji. And thanks again for being here, as always. Appreciate that. Maybe that was too much thinner. Let's try it again here. Actually, I'm going to just deposit some over there aha there we go I think that's maybe more what we were wanting hey Enzibal how are you doing nice to see you hopefully you had yourself a really good Friday And while we're we were painting some hobbits, as we'll bring them back, but right now we're working on our golem right here. Never had a chance to paint him before, so this is fun. So yeah, here's our three. So we got Mary, Pippin, and Golem right here. All three of these, uh, two hours and 51 minutes ago, they had no paint on them whatsoever. No paint at all. Look a little bit different now, don't they? Now, here's my... That's the Radiant Turquoise. Let's see if I can do a couple of highlights here on our rocks. Done it with the Radiant Turquoise. So that, that highlight color is just at least a little bit different than what we've got on his skin. His skin's got basically more of a purple slash violet magenta look to it. And then I might also mix this with some indigo and then because uh, we have a lot of darks on the rocks here. We don't have too many mid-tones. See if we can go back and do some of that too. Now I could always do some some flock on this just to get a little bit of extra texture. That would be something like a really dark, that super dark green, which is almost like a black. That's from Woodland Scenics. Here, oh yeah, this is another area where we're missing this. And we also have to get more magenta. Well, here's our dirty magenta. It's going to go over here. I think a little bit more on his foot. More of a mid-tone here. Now, see, we're trying to... Ah, look at that little bit of that indigo. That's the Williamsburg indigo. Now, 
not yet made this. So Anzibo, actually, have you had a chance to, to do uh, some painting over the last week or two since the last time you were here? Hey, Halligan. <laughs> Glad you could make it back. There, a little bit more of our indigo there. So now that's really starting to, ah, it's starting to separate the rock from here. So yeah, that's a, that is Sparky, the ganja tree man right there. He, uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't set it on fire. He just uses it as a chew. Yeah, so he's, he's more like a, he, he does the chewing of the pipe weed. He doesn't smoke it because, you know, trees and burning stuff, right? That's not cool. I'm going to take... You know what, that's like a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. I'm going to see if I can't. First time on his toes. Get some separation there. It's funny, as I was looking for pictures of the hobbits there, I it was showing me pictures of uh, Faramir and friends from the new uh, Osgiliath starter box. Really looking forward to that and, of course, uh, the terrain that's inside, because terrain, hello. Ah, uh, Anzibot, well, sorry. Sorry about that. Hopefully it was it was just, well, the scares are no fun, but hopefully that was it, just some just some scares, and everything is uh, back to uh, normal. And I'll drop a little bit more of the indigo down here, too. Because, yeah, those are, those are really, and they do give you a scare because they can't exactly just say, oh, yeah, you know, it's just this thing. Yeah, they never just, uh, they never quite verbalize what's going on with them, do they? Again, as we add more of our lighter indigo to that, so it's really, uh, a little bit of pinkishness there really starts to stand out. Let me see if we can't. For his teeth here, I'm going to grab a little bit of the radiant yellow. Okay, I might even go all the way to the brilliant yellow pale. Let's see what we can do here. And then I want to try and get a, a little highlight thing on his eye there. Okay, so we got the upper row. Well, Gollum doesn't really have rows of teeth. He just has some individual ones poking out here and there. That's... That's really more like it. Nah, so sorry about that, uh, main and ends of all. That's uh, that's always going to be a distressing thing, and you can't exactly tell him like, okay, here, look, don't do anything with this bandage. <laughs> like chew it off or something. All right, let me see if we can't. I'm going to take a little bit of that off here, and then let's see if we can drop it there. Okay, I guess we have to thin it down a smidge, but not too much. Once again, I'm going to try and get that paint going here, and then let's see if we can drop a little dot. Boom, right here. Okay, that's, that's about it. I can't really do much more than say that. Now, we also need to get some light side of his mouth over here but not that much weight there's a little bit of magenta now on that brush I guess we're gonna have to thin it down thin paint sticks to thicker paint and vice versa and if we keep thinning it down and nothing happens we got to go the other directions and make it thicker well, that's all it was. We just had to thin it down to a higher degree. It just, sometimes it works out that way. I guess I need to get a little more here. There, just a tiny bit of light on that strand of hair. And uh, just like Fallen Freely says, we hope for a very quick recovery on that, of course. I 
All right, here, let me try to get a little bit more lighter on the, the scars on his back. We don't want to highlight those too much. I know also, too, there's... Wow, they does have some veins and other things. I don't know. We'll see if maybe we can do those as well. I also don't want them to just be white. We want to make sure we maintain the actual color that he has. Which might mean next you're going in the other direction. So instead of just constantly adding lighter colors, lighter colors. I'm going to go this way here. We'll, uh, a little bit of brown matter and the Egyptian Valley. So that. Yeah, it's got a little dark here, and that's too, or mid-tone to it. No, nope, more Egyptian Violet. A little more. Ah. Okay, that's, that's what we needed there. On his ear. And his cheekbone. I think we might want to get a little more light right over here on that that bottom cheekbone. Well, we got this over here. Let's see if this does. Hopefully not too much. Now, right, now that that separates from the shoulder, it was just the, all of a sudden he had, there was no jaw there. That, that didn't seem to quite be right. Now the other eye here, ironically enough, I think there was a mold line that ran through it. Huge surprise. There was a mold line that ran through a critical part of the miniature. And with this basically being a one-piece miniature, well, that's definitely a possibility. Maybe trying to bring out the nose a little more and then the upper lip here. Top of his ear. Maybe that one too. Maybe we... Uh, I was thinking of maybe trying to bring some greens into the skin here, but maybe we shouldn't... Maybe we shouldn't do that. Uh, well, the, the enemy of good is better. Oh, and of course, uh, perfection is the mortal enemy of completion. That's in the Book of Wapo. And again, uh, Armored Wolf was kind enough to do some some graphics on uh, some initial Book of Wapo chapters. And the stickers look fantastic. They really look amazing. Now, Bill, uh, it's, it's always best if it's the, that same mold line. Uh, you also want to run it through some armor plates too, don't you, Bill? And on the hair, yes. Through the eye, through the hair, through the fingers. And uh, and then, of course, any critical armor plates or something like that. Definitely want to do that. If you can make it all the way down to the toes, even better. Ooh. Okay, here. I'll grab some of that violet there. Because this really shouldn't be... Here, right there. I don't necessarily want it to get super light either, but that was looking a little too dark. I think that works out. Yeah. Now this eye over here, he's uh, he's looking this away. Do we need to re? re Try and do this one again. Get the dark over there. Well, first we'll just try and get it dark. So we'll just try a little indigo here. See what happens with that. Thanks so much, Armored Wolf, for posting the donation link. And thank you so much to uh, Allie and Jared for contributing to that. Also, uh, 
Green Fairy Studios. Last night, last night, Gothmog, of course, contributed to that. We appreciate all the contributions. Now, what about down here on the underside of the skin? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't realize there was quite that much indigo on the brush. I don't even know if you really see it here, but just right there, a little something. Where's my blending brush here? It's a hard-to-reach area, but the oils make those hard-to-reach areas no problem whatsoever. Oh, that's right, Grand Oracle. Mold lines, they also need to run through all kinds of filigree patterns. Oh, and scales, right? You got your lizard men. They need to be running right through all of the scales. No, I can't. They're just too far away. Or feathers, yeah. You need them to be running through feathers, of course. And, uh, well, there's some hands there. You need to, uh, and right down the middle of a face, of course. Definitely want that. Wouldn't really be something without the mold lines doing that. Speaking of which, actually, I got to uh, take some pictures of those guys. All I have, I don't actually have any pictures of them done. And I have some of the post stream pictures, but that's it. Actually, one of those we also did as a, a tutorial video on the Patreon page. I think it was a two episode arc. Yeah, I think it was a two episode arc. All right, so what we're doing there is we, we darken that down a little. Now let's lighten it up to get the backbone in here. No, that's got just too much of the white here. Let me grab a little bit of that radiant magenta. Maybe a little bit more of our fast matte white. That's from Gamlin, by the way. I have no idea how much the, uh, if they do make a fast matte white, I don't, well, let's see, okay, it's uh, all the way down maybe at the bottom, oh, they do make a Napsol red, <laughs> so if you want a fast, well, so-called fast drying <coughs> Napsol red that only cost you $17.50, that's, uh, that's practically cad. Well, it's not quite cadmium pricing, but darn close to it. Holy smokes! Yeah, that's. I don't. know. I was talking about it being dry in 20 hours. I'm thinking, huh? Alkids. Well, the fast matte stuff that that starts to dry in just a matter of a few hours. That was the other thing that gave me pause outside of the pricing. Oh, yeah. We'll lighten this up just a smidge there. The ankle. So many uh, stringy little muscles here on our Gollum figure. And he's, he's tiny. I know people have asked me... You know, so you, you only use the oils on big figures. Say, so, no, I use them on everything. I've used them on tiny little flames of war miniatures. I've used them on really big 72 mil figs, on busts, you name it. They work well for on everything. Terrain, those little tiny armada ships. see if I can put a light on his knee there and then I guess throw a little bit of our yellow here on the loincloth and maybe even a little bit of texture on it I don't know ah uh, boy Bill I can never quite uh, well actually Bithron is Flames of War, is it a 10 or is it a 15? Because I've, I've had people tell me it's a 15 mil game. Actually, Di Marino might know also. 
But I have a feeling it's more like a 10 or something like that. Because 15 seems a little bit big given, the again, the size of some of the things that I painted for that game. I, I, I would say it's got to be more like a 10. Oh, Dave, Dean Marino says it's 15. As I was moving stuff around, I ran across a Samwa and a Renault tank that I painted way back in the early days. The one thing I'm disappointed that Warlord never did was to do the uh, the mounted, the vehicle mounted anti-aircraft. Well, basically, a, it's a 75 millimeter gun on the back of a well, what looks like a a very primitive truck. Uh, so falling freely, you, hopefully you uh, are able to fall asleep freely and very easily and get a nice sleep there. Everybody again, please give falling freely that follow. And thanks so much for the raid. Appreciate it as always. All right, well, I think we're almost there on his one. Uh, let me see if I can move. All right, that got awful dirty here. I'm going to try and do a little bit more on this eye. Ah, okay, I think now I f feel like he's looking that way. And boy, somehow, got to get that little light dot on there. Or I could just take a little bit of some glossy stuff. Paint that on there, I guess. All right, I'm going to try and get rid of some of the excess. And do a lighter dot there. Bring in a little more. Yeah, I'm going to try the either the indigo or the Van Dyke brown. Let me see if I can do that darker pupil on the eye. I'm going to be tricky. Oh, that is definitely going to be tricky. I think that's just going to have to do it right there. Uh, so see you later there, Fallen Freely. Okay, I think I got the dark edge along that. What about his feet there? His teeth. I'm going to see if I can do one one bit of dark on the mouth there on that side and I think there's a couple of strands of hair maybe that hang down there that we're kind of missing yeah that works out better I don't want to emphasize the teeth too much but I might have to lighten those up again. Now I'm just looking for some deeper darks on the skin, especially over here in these shadow areas. So again, trying to get that little hint of the moonlight, but also some enough warm colors on the skin so that it stands out from our rock. And I think that works. Also, too, didn't take uh, terribly long, did it? Again, three hours and 14 minutes ago, all three of these guys were paint free. They were just primer. That's it. Hopefully, we can get back to our our good old Saturday challenges where I've got I don't know 10 miniatures a dozen miniatures 15 I think that was our record painting up 15 of those Moria goblins here yeah 15 of them I know and then we did where's our dwarves over here we did nine of those in a ten and a half hour stream so Again, it, it's going to be a while before we can do those again, but 
Looking forward to it. That's one way to work through a whole bunch of Lord of the Rings figures in a hurry. Yeah, maybe I also have to think where maybe the uh, hands or the legs are also going to put a little bit of a cast shadow here on our base. Where's my blue again? This is kind of a mid-tone. I think we need something a little bit more towards that radiant turquoise. And I'll just throw some light down here. Kind of indicating maybe there's some kind of moonlight or whatever. Now, where was that one? Oh, here one. So this was a printing goes over on Gabo here. I shrank him actually about 20%. And then this is a sculpy thing that he's climbing up there. That, that's not a base that you can print or whatever. That's just a base that I made. And I'm hoping <clears throat> that I can find a basically a golem that's doing something like that. And we can make a, well, a different climbing base for him. Because that would be really fun. All right, we're back to again that uh, taking that little smidge of the radiant turquoise, mixing that with the indigo. You could also, I think, maybe take the indigo and mix it with a little bright yellow pale, and that would give you sort of that grayish moonlight. A little bit more of our light right here again along the edge of that base. Like the, the light's coming down here. Uh, and there's no white in this. This is just the straight up radiant turquoise here with a little bit of the indigo mixed in. So if anything, it's, it's that much darker than white. Just looks really light because the oils are so effective at generating all the, the darker colors here. They really are. Here, this is another place where maybe the, the indigo got lost. Okay, there we are. Just let's hit a little bit indigo right there. Doesn't really change the light or dark. That wasn't what it was about. It's about the color. It's actually a color there now. There wasn't before. You can have two colors, I don't know, you get have orange and purple, or especially something like red and green right next to each other. They could be the same value. If you were to kill the color on them, they would just blend together. But visually, seeing them in color, huge difference between them. Even though they're, one is no lighter or darker than the other one. And those are the little subtle things that you kind of start to learn to play around with a bit. Here, let me see if I can grab this without making too much of a mess of thing. Nope, that's not going to work. Hmm, I'm going to try and put a little bit of my Wetzel to Violet on the ends of the fingers here to make that a little bit darker yeah so the tops of the hands have a little more light on them again put something there in his eye okay so now that the hair starts to stand out and is neck which yes it's dark back there but shouldn't be darker than the hair well <laughs> what little strands there are of it not much left so this is the old classic metal golem figure these are the new 
new plastic ones that came with the uh, tree beard set. And of course, now I'm going to have to f locate my other hobbitses. Some more Sam's and Frodo's. I think that, I don't know if I have any more of the uh, Merry and Pippin. Uh, well, except for the ones where they're sitting on Treebeard and chucking around some rocks. Those are the only other ones I think that I might have. Aside from 3D printed ones. Again, even though that's dark, I just throw a little bit of the indigo blue. And indigo is one of those staining colors. I did notice there there's a difference between the Williamsburg indigo and say the Windsor Newton indigo. Really no surprise. You know what, if I throw a little more of the indigo there. Yeah, that looks a little more interesting there. Now are the warmer colors and the loincloth stand out, the warmer colors on his skin. But still, remember one of the first things we did was a pre-glaze of indigo here. There wasn't, we didn't do an indigo pre-glaze pre on the rock. We did it on him. Then we painted the warmer colors over the top. That kind of goes along with the whole color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere. Do I want to throw a little bit of my blue here on the back of his head? Yeah, maybe even here. The underside of his arm. And now I'm going to go back here. We'll take some of that fast matte white. And maybe then do some of the final rock highlights here. Only really the top, top edges of those. Like this. There. Now his toe is there. We're gonna. I'm gonna maybe try the same thing that we just did. This hands to darken down the ends of something. Here we go. So that one's okay to leave that one light, but these really needed to be oh, a bit darker. Back to some of that lighter indigo. Where's my, there it is. There's the radiant turquoise. And some of the indigo. More light on the side of the rock again. Maybe the light coming down this way. I mean, you could make it even more extreme lighting if, if you wanted to. I mean, it's, it's your miniature, your way. Be interesting to have a whole you know, rangers of a Cillian army where they're all just uh, kind of lit by moonlight. Where they all kind of have that bluish gray look to them. And uh, well, if you're using the three printed basing bits, you could have some tree branches that are. Maybe casting some shadows on them. So see there, that's again the light coming down this way. It's been a while since we've actually painted a base quite like this. Lately we've been leaving that to things like the flock and the ground cover. Maybe a smidge back there and then one more touch of our light up here and that's going to be the not quite straight up 
a fast matte white, but darn close to it. A few more lights up here. So I think uh, what we might, uh, that could be interesting. We'll uh, try and take our, our video here of Gollum and we'll try and maybe do a YouTube video of just our Gollum figure here. Uh, let's see, so uh, Helligan, you can actually bake that stuff pretty darn thick. Now, I think the thickest I've ever done was maybe, uh, probably for some creatures back in the day, maybe an inch or something thick, maybe even a little bit thicker. So what you would, so if it's an uh, inch and a half thick, um, so hell again, you might uh, want to fill in uh, tin foil. that's it. Yeah, you might want to use a little bit of tin foil if it's going to be that thick, just to well, save yourself some money, right? Because that's going to be a lot of your sculpey there. It also weigh a ton. Uh, but you, I think they, they even say on the box, for every quarter inch or half inch or something like that, you add X amount of time. So if, if you're doing something that's an inch thick, you might want to bake that for half an hour instead of just 15 minutes or 18 or something like that. You might want to double the time. Obviously, you don't want to go too long because then it'll just start catching on fire, but uh, you will want to bake it longer if it's thicker. But if you do the tin foil thing, and it's only about a quarter inch thick and the rest is all tin foil on the inside well oof, there you go you just bake it at the normal that was it that's 18 minutes or, or is it 20 minutes for a quarter inch okay i'm just trying to catch light that's coming down here on to the base I'm trying to do as much of a kind of a spotlight as possible. Let me see if I can get a highlight here. Ah, there we go. So see, we have some highlights on there. I did have to wait, though. Had to be a patient little hobbit. Now, yeah, hell again, that... Uh, oh, remember when I showed you Grand? And I think uh, some of the other earlier things that I made out of Scopey. I just wish that I had thought of the whole tin foil stuff back in the day. My goodness, it would have saved a lot of scopey, a lot of time, a lot of weight. Is there a recoil in the house? There is a recoil in the house. Hey there, recoil. Welcome back. Or should I say, well, no, we won't. We are all Gothmog. So recoil, here's uh, three hours, 28 minutes ago, we had three little sort of hobbitses with no paint on them. Uh, they have a little bit more. They also have some texture and uh, this is the first chance in all these years since what 2003 of painting these. I could swear I've never had a chance to paint a golem before. Now maybe way way back in 2003 I might have painted this or, or another, I don't know how many of the old metal golem figures they did back in the day. Uh, so Bill says that all of the uh, all the coding to read all of the Gothmog STL files, that's working. Well, that's fantastic there, Bill. Well, like I was telling you, I have to go through and basically try and categorize at least two years of STL files from what... 10 different companies basically that's going to take a while but again the, thanks to thanks to dio we have a machine now that i can be in the room with kathy and do that kind of stuff so we appreciate that here's uh yeah i'm going to keep going with the again that is the lighter indigo 
Oh, and uh, recoil. It's, it's kind of funny we're doing all this indigo on the base part. Just Van Dyke Brown for the pre-glaze there. We actually used indigo on his pre-glaze, but you can see now he has a warmer look to him, and then the base itself has a much cooler look to it. And that's the fun thing about the pre-glaze is you can kind of set things up like that where you're going to have have warmer colors for your lights but you leave the cooler colors there in those all important darker areas now so recoil i think part of it is i just never had none of the armies that i was playing Gollum would never be a part of those so there was a little bit of that And I, well, I, again, I might have painted one way, way back in the early days that I just don't remember. All right, we'll catch you later there, Hal, again. Again, I hope that that, that new, uh, new one works out really well for you. And like I said, after the stream, I'll try and get that edited and rendered and uploaded if possible. Well, Bill, that's, uh, that sounds fantastic. I'm, that's going to be a huge, huge help. That'll be like the army builder of uh, STL files. Yeah, there you go, Bill. You're creating the army builder software of STL files. So you have yourself a good one there, Hal, again, for sure. Now, of course, uh, I'll have to look through and see... If I have any really nice uh, 3D printable ones, <clears throat> I think I have one from uh, the printing goes ever on, but that one's, uh, I think I need to reprint that one. I think it's too small. I think it's actually probably about 10% smaller than this guy here. Unless uh, I just haven't seen him in a while and I'm, not remembering that correctly. You know what? I'm going to go back over here. Where's my indigo again? Oh, what the heck? We'll just use that. I see this rock here, the way it's facing. That is what I needed right there. <clears throat> I might actually have to grab me something to drink here, too. Uh, hey, Valfira, we haven't done a f we haven't done any film noir tonight. Now, let me see if uh, we'll grab these two. I'll grab these two, and let's see what happens with a little parting film noir for you. Interesting. Plenty of value there. But boy, the when you see the, the orange versus the kind of purple trousers there, and then the warmer skin tone versus the cooler rocks... Especially on the golem there. That really does make a big difference. Look at that. So yeah, that, that warmer orangey stuff there compared to the trousers. And then here we got the blue versus the magentas over there. So you have yourself a good one, Valfira. And uh, well, hopefully that heals really quickly. Because I, I know that those uh, flat screen TVs don't necessarily weigh as much as the old style massive units but still they're sharp and that still had to weigh it still had to feel like it weighed a thousand pounds landed on your foot or toes as the case may be so yeah here's hoping that your saturday has less monday in it yeah you know you don't need to combine Mondays and Fridays together. That's, uh, that is no good. Thank you so much. Armored Wolf for posting a link to the Patreon page. Like I said, this is our latest video that we will be editing and then rendering. Technically, it's kind of a two-parter because I actually did film the basing of that. And not debasing, but the basing. <laughs> That's a whole different context right there. Now, what about right here along this edge? 
It's a little bit like what we were doing for our not tree beard last night, where we started putting a little more texture things. Once we figured out, okay, we have our general values in there, let's maybe break things down a little bit here and there to some smaller shapes. Now, let me see. Oh, boy, that's going to be interesting. Let me see if we can use a little bit of the ultramarine here. I'm just going to try and see if I can't do a little bit of a lighter section here. Okay, bam, that's it. That is it. Well, uh, what was it we called uh, our, our multi-phase pre -gla Oh, yeah, we called it reglazing. We did that on these guys, right, where we put the Van Dyke brown on there, wiped it away. Then we did the perlene black on the cloaks, and uh, basically it was a second pre-glaze. We called it a reglaze because, you know, we have to come up with something that's just uh, crazy and silly. That's what we do here. All right, yeah, now a couple little against striations of indigo here. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to see if I can't try and do the whole uh, veins on our, well, is he Gothmog or is he Gollum? I don't know. Everyone is Gothmog now. Oh yeah, the, the hand here, that's all just mostly light. We have nothing there. That's more, more shape in his hand. So uh, I guess this is a, this is a relative of both Gothmog and Gollum. It's Gollmog, which that is kind of Tolkienian there, Bill, because, uh, I mean, that's kind of how their names went, right? It's... Ellen Deal meant elf friend or some whatever, right? So that's very Tolkienian. All right, well, Valfera, again, I really hope that tomorrow you don't have you're not uh, you're not putting any more Halloween decorations on the floor. Yeah, that's a that is a it's a free. Halloween decoration, but it's kind of pricey though in terms of pain Very realistic very realistic Halloween decoration though It's one it's one that can't even pass the blue wand test or whatever Uh, luminol, I think that's what they call it, right? Where they test for blood spatter. I will try to take here. This is a little bit of the... Not brilliant yellow pale, some of the radiant yellow. It's actually got some of the green in there, too. Right here, again, maybe a little bit of smidge of texture. I know that's what all the cool kids do these days. Everything is all about texture. On figures that are so darn small, when you can barely see the texture on a full-size person, but that's uh, what it's all about these days. Maybe a smidge more down on the end of the, well... Have torn up loincloth there. I want. I might want to right here on this strand of here. I don't want to go as as light as we did see on these couple of strands because again we've got the light sort of focusing coming down this way here. So we've got this on the base. Uh, whoops. Well, now that's interesting. You know what? I haven't really tried indigo with the Indian yellow. Or sorry, about the uh, ultramarine blue with the Indian yellow. That would make 
not necessarily that'd be kind of a dirty green right there wouldn't exactly be the purest green not like phthalo green or even yeah even the pearling black and indian yellow but now we just throw a little bit of the indigo that's uh that's one of the more reddish blues you're going to find before it basically starts to become some kind of violet or purple whereas the indigo is much more of a greenish blue as in very much a greenish blue here actually well i'm looking at this speaking of some violet here Oof, too little too late there so we we needed it to be a little bit darker but also again that that warmer color to get that temperature contrast it's that is super important i think we've got that here on his oh yeah here's we got that separation between the the deltoid and his muscle there so the, okay we're gonna is uh yeah all right that's better i think we did that over here already i might let this muscle just get this bicep catch a little more light and maybe maybe that bicep too i don't know i take her oh you know what i think i'll use the brilliant yellow pale in our uh, radiant magenta here together it's a little even more worn than just say the the white and the magenta together and we're just going to try and piece together a few little lights right along this area here just a bit got the fingers down there but I'm so glad that I just as I was kind of trying to rework the area this among a few other ones were just they've kind of been sitting there ready and waiting for paint and I thought well let's if the hobbits has progressed fast enough which they did we could also get to this But yeah, I'm going to have to go look back and see if I can figure out what the level the hype train was that we had earlier on. Yeah, recoil, that was quite the hype train. It uh, tends to happen on the earlier streams. Alright, you know what? I'm going to go all the way over here to this magenta. So it should be more of a middle to... Ah, there we go. Yeah. I just needed to fade out this one. There's like a big old line here. We wanted something a little bit softer than just than that. And what about over here? I think actually this lower lip needs to be somewhat lighter too. Let me see if we can just use this for it. Boy, that's 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 gonna be close. Actually, gonna deposit some of that over here, and then we'll use just the tiniest amount there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, he was was looking a little bit peaked there. Uh, the other thing too. Now we've been working on him for at least an hour and something. So some of the paint is starting to set none of it is dry at all nothing's dry but when the paint begins to set it makes it just easier to get your next application of paint on there you, you still have to be considering the thick over thin and all that kind of stuff but just in general it tends to be easier Uh, so yeah recoil the earlier hobbits is there was very fun and did the same kind of texture thing that we did with the more armored hobbits and we'll get the the flock and foliage on those and 
uh, here. Now that's that's just a radiant violet there. So we're gonna throw that right over here on his arm, and over here on the chest. Are there some? Right, let me look at my reference here. There might be some ribs that you can see there. Yeah, you kind of can't. All right, well, is this light enough to show those, or do we just need to? do that more with some darks. Well, first I'm just going to do this. Okay, I think we've given them the impression of some ribs there. Now, this needs to also be a little lighter, but not too much. Well, that, that's kind of light. Here, we're going to take a... That's the indigo and our magenta mixed together. And at each and every one of these brush jokes that we do, it's mixing the existing paint with what's on the brush. So it's, you could do it with the separate blending brush like we always do, or you could just kind of do this and say, so, okay, after a few brush strokes, we'll be picking up the paint that's already on the figure that's going to blend with our new stuff. Now, this needs to be for the tendons on his foot. They're kind of hard to see. I think that just about did it. Where's my... It's the radiant violet there. Yeah, you know what? Same thing on this side. Let's see if we can give him some ribs over on this side. Eh. Another over there okay yeah all right so now he's got some ribs there didn't really see that toy I was painting along with that was, was that a mold line well no not unless there's like four armies there uh, so recoil there's a couple of legendary legions I think one of them is uh, is the goblin town because I'll see you'll see him uh, used in battle reports with the goblin town army where you've got the Goblin King. I think he ends up in a lot of scenarios. So he's not necessarily part of the army, but he's part of maybe a scenario. So obviously in uh, the Goblin Town army, I think he still got he still has possession of the ring at that point. And he's he's not exactly He's not exactly Gothmog the Balrog, but he is nasty because he just kind of shows up out of nowhere. And that makes him obviously really difficult to hit, doesn't matter what your fight skill is. And he messes with your fight skill. He's one of those kind of messing with your heroes type things. And I think there's also certain fellowship forces like uh, I think if you're doing say a Rangers of Athelion I don't know if it's a legendary legion or if it's the standard Rage Rangers of Athelion where you would have say Sam Frodo and Gollum along with say Faramir and maybe not Baragond uh, not maybe Damrod I think but I think uh, Faramir's Rangers Uh, it, it's weird recoil. I've seen uh, in battle reports. I've seen little little Gothmog here do some serious harm. Uh, but again, because of the the ring. Now, when it's just regular Gollum, say from the Rangers of Athelion, he's he's mischievous, but he's not uh, he's not quite so nasty. Hey, White Rose Dragon. Nice to see you back. Yeah, I'm kind of now, well, again, all these different guys that I'm painting that I've never had a chance to play before. Really looking forward to, especially now that we have the at least the table set up and some initial terrain on it. So we're going to have to just try and do a little bit of playing of the game there just to get familiar with the playing of it. Yes, we've seen a million battle reports. But actually doing the stuff where you're rolling dice, you don't want 
Don't want to be doing that for the first time while filming. Has we had a couple more. No, those are too light. Let's back off of this a little bit. There we go. That's more of, again, a bluish gray. As opposed to an actual white. Yeah, Rose Dragon, I, I think... Uh, I, I sort of like characters along the lines of... Well, let me see if we can find them here. I always liked Grima. He doesn't kill anything. He doesn't hurt anything. But he's always he's crying into the handkerchief here. So he basically just bums everybody out. And uh, while well, you suffer some uh, negatives to your, to your courage tests. And also you need to use... Uh, for every one point of might you're going to spend, you have to spend a second point just because he's sitting there bumming everybody out. I think I've actually had a chance to use him twice. Which was interesting when the other side had Boromir with the, you know, the one with the six points of might. And all of a sudden, you know, you got you have poor little sad Kareem, a worm tongue hanging around. That six point of might didn't get you quite so far. And you know, as long as he's not uh, doing any combat stuff, you can't kill him either. Ah, uh, Landrest has returned. Hey there, Landrest. Well, look, what we got. We got three of them there. In three hours and 51 minutes. Uh, Bill, actually, uh, I think it was, which one is that? I think it's not Nerd of the Rings, or was it Men of the West? I think it was maybe Nerd of the Rings and not Men of the West. They did one of their lore videos on Grima. And just that they were trying to figure out, basically, Grima before... Lord of the Rings. Did he start out as a loyal? Did he start out loyal and then he was corrupted? Or was he always kind of that way? And he, he had chances to redeem himself. Yeah, Landris, I was uh, just talking about the old style Saturday challenges. Uh, so, Landris, I think you were around when I said that I've I've got some of those PBO paints showing up, or Pabeo paints. Some of those oils, we'll see what those are like. And, well, I got myself a new vat for the Sonic Mini 4K, because changing the FEP just, well, I'll probably spend more in busted screwdrivers trying to change that thing than actually getting one and shipping it here so uh, we're, is this a bill is that a little bit like our social media platform where we're you know pinstagram where we combine insta instagram pinterest reddit uh twitter all in one platform we're going to just have one one name it's a universal name it's just all the characters all in one name So yeah, Landress, there's just been, uh, I don't know if it's been the uh, the Lost Kingdom stuff. I tried printing a Signum, and that was also had a little bit of a, a thing that fell off of the supports. So I, I did a re-leveling. I have no idea if that's going to make a difference or not. But the, yeah, the FEP in that thing is a little bit beat up. So I thought, well, if I have a whole nother VAT then I might be able to change the FEP on this one. It's just looking a little bit peaked. All right, here, a couple more lights there. Uh, yeah. Like so. That'll work. 
I get kind of like the moonlight or whatever you know whatever's kind of dim light coming down and illuminating him where's my radiant magenta little bit of light there yeah don't want to lose the the grayish color though we give him some ribs I don't know, let me go back to that's our radiant yellow, a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale, maybe a little more here. I want to see if I can't maybe lighten up the one or two of the teeth and see if there's a couple other lights that we can do. So first the the teeth, let's see if we can make this work. Just one of them. He doesn't uh, he doesn't exactly have rows of teeth. Ah, okay, that's that's better. Yeah, Galmog here doesn't really have the finest of teeth. And I want to just throw a little bit of that down here on his one toe. This one too. So using uh, actually a little bit different color here for some of these highlights. It's uh, more of a yellow-ish. More here. Uh, actually, Landrest, uh, when I saw that the a new Sonic Mini 4K would it's 269 versus 99 with the the new vat well the shipping there that was that was what made that cost more sadly no vats to be had on amazon suppose i could have looked on ebay but mm, that didn't didn't sound like the grandest plan no one can see if he's got any furrows in his brow let me go back to my reference here well, there's not as many as I thought. There's some, though. Maybe over here. Oh, what the heck? Maybe we'll stick with... Nah. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the radiant magenta to add to that. And we'll do a couple little here. And then uh, this is where there's some furrows. Ah, there we are. Maybe even lighten up that a little more there. So he's uh, this is he's looking hostile right here. Yeah, Landris, we've we've talked about it a few times, right? Where you'll see tons of Elegu pieces and parts on uh, Amazon and stuff, and any cubic, but of all three, Sonic is not where you're going to be finding him. Or you won't be finding the Sonic stuff on Amazon, except for the printers. Just no parts. There was definitely a temptation to go, well, maybe I should just have a yet another backup machine. Since just the FEP is almost half as much as a machine. Or at least 45% or so. Eh, maybe 40%. All right, I'm gonna throw one more bit of light here. That's again a radiant magenta, some of the fast matte as well. Let's see if we can get this one area here. Now again, uh, maybe not so much with the veins. Yeah, not so much with the veins. Don't think we'll do that. We'll try to get me a little bit of light right there. You know, I might just hit the ends of his fingers here. As much as I like the idea of 
the shadows here on the ends of the fingers. We'll go with that. Maybe so on the end of these two fingers there. Uh, no problem, and well, thank you so much for being here. And again, I hope that uh, there's a speedy recovery there for the hound and everything goes just fantastic. And then you don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, okay, they had there, that was a couple little areas here where we've got the, the scarring. That was looking a little bit wonky. Again, just taking, oh yes, here we need a little bit of reflected light there. We also we got our rib cage going there now. What about on the leg? I think we're all right there. This might be too much to try and add a little more light to either the chin here and or the hair. Either one of those needed just a tiny bit more shape. And I think that does it. I think that helps. Not so much on that side though. Same thing on his back over here. And I might go one bit lighter. Where's my fast mat? Right there on the spine. Maybe bring out some vertebrae. Yeah, that didn't not where we need that so we'll go back over here we got our violet again okay that's better that just didn't quite go where it was supposed to no big deal just took a second to correct that I think I will try to put in another little no, that might be too well. Let me look at his reference again. And a reference pictures never hurt. You can never have too many. Well, you, sometimes you can't have too many reference pictures, actually. I've seen that happen to people. They were kind of paralyzed by their references. They were kind of held a hostage to them. That's, you don't want that. You want that sort of balance between, okay, maybe a little bit of license, especially with something like this, right? It's a miniature. It's sometimes what might be realistic might not read quite so well on something that's, well, this tiny. And he is small. It's only a 25 millimeter base right there. <laughs> that's it. I think we've got enough of our yellow on that. And I think we've got sufficient amount of the scarring that shows there. Even have a little indication of the ribs. Now, should the hair have any more darks in it? Well, we mostly just have the Van Dyke brown here. I think we've got those are strands of hair. I think this one too. Let's make sure that these actually get connected here. I might try to lighten up these over here. Yeah, Grand Oracle, it's pretty wild, right? That uh, And of course, uh, the other day I completely forgot to clean off the brushes and was able to clean all that stuff out the next day 
That that doesn't work so well with acrylics, that's for sure, right? That is that will not be a fantastic plan. I mean it's not really something I want to do on purpose, but there's times where after a stream between fatigue and other things, I just don't even remember to do that. And that that could be ugly. Actually, I did throw in one more of these to get to the $49 of free shipping there from from Dick Blick. Again, with those uh, Pabeo paints that are coming this way. So I think we'll just try and have a couple of prepped miniatures and then we'll just, uh, since they're mostly staining colors that I got, I'll try and grab ones that would really utilize that staining aspect. There we go. See, we're going to darken this down, right? Basically create a shadow under his arm. Under his hand, anyways. Now, we don't want to look like ice crystals, either. Yeah, boy, Grand Oracle. I'm trying to think of the last time I used an airbrush has to be around June of 2021. So darn near a year and a half ago. That's the last time. Uh, so Anzibot, well, they're doing their... They've kind of brought it back down to uh, 49 hours for free shipping. For a while there, it was almost 70 hours for free shipping. Now that I think they have some Black Friday things going on, it wasn't uh, wasn't the things that I got, but I'm sure there's some Black Friday things happening there. I think the only thing I saw that was easily identifiable was the Utrecht oil paints. Hey, preach paints, how you doing? Nice to see you again. Well, definitely, uh, well, here, four hours, 14 minutes ago. Gollum, Mary, and Pippin had no paint on them. They were just primer. So three figures in a little over four hours. That's uh, how we always have prep figures. Oh, and speaking of prep figures, uh, we might just do Aowen and... Uh, we can never have too many Gandalfs, right? So Eowyn and Gandalf, huge surprise. I think that would give us six Gandalfs to mess around with for our puppet shows. And the one thing we really don't have, we have Gandalf the White on, on Shadow Facts, but we don't have just a regular old Gandalf the White on foot. So I can only imagine how he's not going to be too happy about a white robe being his fabulous prize for dying, fighting the Balrog. So Preach Paints, how you doing? I hope that uh, you've actually had a chance to be doing some painting yourself. What sort of projects have you been working on? Hopefully you've been able to. I know sometimes for folks, uh, life does intercede and not in the best way for painting, of course. Oh, thanks, Preach. Appreciate that. Now, I don't know if you've seen the some of the Conquest stuff. <laughs> Speaking of way bigger than these guys. And I guess now that Thanksgiving has passed, it's safe for our chicken riders to come out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, these... I swear these are 48 millimeter scale. I know that uh, I was told they're 38s, but... Given the fact that they are double the size of 28 millimeter figures, I'm, I'm calling them 48s. And preach if you have any sort of Instagram, Discord, whatever links to painted stuff, you want to share that. I'm sure that will be fabulous. Yeah, I think that works. I might even. This would be interesting. We'll get, take some of our perlene black here. Sort of a greenish gray. 
and we'll let that work its way into a few spots here maybe the hair maybe even on the skin just a couple of spots we have plenty of that magenta color now we're going to work in some of that grayish green here on his hand I think we're good on that side of the face maybe on his arm here where, where we've got the rocks blending brush to tone that down now nah, now nah, let's go back over here to the brown matter that where's there oh here's our yellow burnt umber sort of creates a bit of a faded yellow ochre and just a smidge more right there Now back to that, and we'll throw a few little dots of that. Also on the ground color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. 